Good evening. Welcome to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Tonight we are celebrating the 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Please join in singing glory and praise to our God. Numbers. The Lord came down. 
down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the seventy elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, named one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord.
John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, a small child was sitting at the kitchen table one day with a piece of paper and a box of crayons, all busy drawing a picture. And the mother came over and asked, what are you drawing? To which the child replied, I'm drawing a picture of God. But my dear, said the mother, nobody knows what God looks like. To which the child replied, oh, but they will as soon as they see my picture. <laughs> you know, all of us have some mental picture or image or concept or idea of God. But because we're human, we can only identify or describe God in human terms. We're limited to thinking about the infinite God in finite terms which can never adequately describe Him. We have some idea of how God works in our lives and in the world but because we're human, we tend to put limits on that Spirit of God. We only expect Him to work the way we imagine that He should. We put God in a box, as it were. So today's readings not only teach us something about the workings of God's Spirit, but also something about human nature. In that first reading from Numbers, the Israelites have been in the desert now for some time. And once again, they were engaged in their favorite pastime. In other words, they were grumbling. This time, because they were tired of eating manna. Moses becomes depressed. He's overcome with the magnitude of his job, trying to rule over an unruly people. And so he has a talk with God about his problems. And he learns that he does not have to bear the entire burden of leadership. God advises him to appoint 70 helpers. And then he promises to take some of the spirit that's on Moses and put it on those 70 helpers so they can bear the burden of the people, along with Moses. For Joshua, however, the gift of God's spirit was a threat because it did not conform to his expectations. When God's Spirit expresses itself in prophecy and even takes in the two men who were left in the camp, Joshua complains to Moses, in essence saying, stop them, they can't do that. Moses, on the other hand, welcomes the sharing of God's Spirit and even wishes that God's prophetic Spirit 
could be extended to all of God's people. Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put the Lord's Spirit on them. Those words of Moses to Joshua present us with two challenges. The first is to avoid the jealousy of Joshua and to rejoice in the spread of God's Spirit, even when it comes from outside of our own religious community. We are reminded that the Spirit of God is larger than our definition of it, that it goes beyond any boundaries we presume to put on it. And then the second challenge involves the fact that the ministries of this parish cannot be covered by two priests, two deacons, and a handful of staff working by themselves. We would soon be overwhelmed, like Moses. Your involvement, all of you, your involvement in the ministries of this parish are not only welcomed, your involvement is essential to make this parish a vibrant Christian community. In our Gospel selection from John today, the disciples also attempt to limit the action of God's Spirit because it does not conform to their expectations. The response of Jesus, like that of Moses, is open and tolerant of the many ways in which God's power may operate. And Jesus counsels his disciples not to include those who do acts of goodness in his name, but who do not define themselves as disciples, or who are not seen as disciples by the disciples themselves. Jesus suggests a wider, more inclusive community of people, people whose task is to make a difference. He is saying that there are those who work for the reign of God, and those who work against it. For Jesus, the only important distinction is between those who live out the life of Jesus in mind, body, and spirit, and those who do not, which I think reveals to us not only the mercy and love of divine nature, but the authentic dimensions of human nature. Now let us consider some situations in our world today. You know, we still have many demons around. They're at work in our world. We don't have to go very far to find them. They're in our homes, our neighborhoods, our communities, our schools, and even in our church. And we're confronted with them every day on the news. Let me name a few. Intolerance, racism, prejudice, hatred, a lack of respect and dignity for the sanctity of human life, especially pre-born, physical and sexual abuse, addiction, corporate greed, hunger, poverty. And if we take the words of our scripture reading seriously today, then we can say that anyone who works to root out or to overcome those demons, whatever we call them, that person is doing the work of God. Regardless of that person's religious affiliation or lack of it, regardless of the color of that person's skin or their ethnic or cultural background, in the language of today's Gospel, they are doing the work of Christ, whether they know His name or not. So our readings today are challenging us. They're challenging us to acknowledge that God speaks through many channels. He speaks wherever there is truth. Moses wished that all people of the Lord would be prophets. We should hope that we would always be willing to acknowledge the possibility of God speaking to us in wonderful and surprising ways, and that we would rejoice in the truth spoken and the good done by others, regardless of who they are. When it comes to responding to God's Spirit, none of us has a corner on the market. Part of discipleship involves listening 
and observing and ultimately rejoicing in a many, many different ways God's grace touches our lives daily. Now, implied in today's readings is the presumption that all of us have within us the capacity to respond to God's initiatives. God shared His Spirit with the elders in the time of Moses. On the day of Pentecost, His Spirit came to rest on all the men and women gathered in that upper room. And all of us have been initiated into the life of Christ, and we have received the gift of the Spirit. That gift of the Spirit means that every one of us has the power and the responsibility to promote and to live the charity, the justice, and the unity that lie at the heart of our Catholic ethic of life. And although we've been given the gift of the Spirit, sometimes we're either completely unprepared or we're unwilling to use that gift for the sake of the community, or we're unwilling to let others use their gift on our behalf. God has bestowed His Spirit on all of us. Now what are we going to do with it?
we pray to the Lord. Lord, in our prayers. God of infinite love and mercy, we bring these prayers to you, mindful of your care for us. Make your presence known to all who are in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing your words of spirit and life. Spirit, 
graciously made holy, this is if they are brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mystery. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and give you thanks. He said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in christ May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim journey on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop, the order of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayer of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Fill him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the 
say in command to form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sins and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we say your portion, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Please join in singing on one bread, one ball. Amen.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O oh Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Life Chain will be next Sunday, October the 3rd, from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Sacred Heart parishioners will be praying for an end to abortion at the Richmond Rosenberg Life Chain along Highway 90A in front of McCoy's. Please sign up today after Mass at the table in the plaza. See the bulletin for more information. Wherever you are in your Catholic faith, Jesus wants to meet you right there and take you forward. Please join the men of the parish for one of the premier men's programs in the Catholic Church today. That man is you. It starts this coming Thursday, September the 30th, at 6 p.m. in the Family Life Center. Please stop by the table outside to sign up or ask questions about the program. Then bizarre news, Raffle tickets and dinner tickets are also on sale this weekend. The cost of the meal is still only $10. Buy your ticket today and plan to join a delicious meal on Sunday, October the 10th. Only 1,500 tickets will be sold. We still need items for the live auction and the silent auction, and we need gift cards in $10 amounts. Your donations are greatly appreciated. And then today is also Baby Bottle Boomerang Sunday, benefiting the Fort Bend Pregnancy Resource Medical Center. Please take a bottle home, put your donation in it, and return it to church next weekend. There will be bins located at the church entrances. Thank you. Please be seated, Deacon Don. Okay. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it's so good to see all of you. Are you able to see me? I'm short. I'm short over here. All right. As you know, 86 years ago, there was a young boy who was born into the world, and his name is Don, Donald Trump. I'm sorry, Donald Reeves. <laughs> and today, he celebrates his 86th birthday. So let us give a big applause to celebrate. because we had to add nine months in his mother's womb, right? <laughs> uh, and today, thank you, and today, his uh, granddaughter who comes from Nipfield will have a gift for Deacon Don. So please, 
uh, come and receive the gifts from your granddaughter. Come to meet you. We offer you grateful praise for the gifts of life. Hear the prayers of Deacon John, your servant, who recalls today the day of his birth and rejoices in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Bless him with your presence and surround him with your love that he may enjoy many happy years all of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. One more time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. And you be God. Please join in singing, Your Grace is Enough. Mm -hmm. 